this so that way we can post it on the uh, YouTube channel. So I want to go over a couple of things. I know that we didn't do market outlook for like two weeks. Uh, you know what? We've been having holidays. The markets have been kind of slow. I felt like it wasn't time to trade yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to review what happened during uh you know during the month of december closer to the uh close of the year up until the beginning of the year um and i want you guys to really take into account a couple of key factors some volatility was definitely not there and the funny thing is is i didn't realize how um how a lot less volatile the markets are around the holidays um, you know, that's just, I guess, from different perspective, but, um, we had NFP last week. Um, I was actually observing NFP. I did not trade NFP actually. Uh, but it was a very, it was a very good, uh, it was a very good practice session for all of us to, uh, reconvene afterwards. So what I really want to, uh, go over today are a couple of pairs and i think everybody was talking about the flash crash can everybody hear me perfectly fine i got my headphones in yes awesome cool all right cool so we're going to go into usdjpy because this is the one that had reacted the strongest whenever we had this nice little flash crash apparently like it was crazy it was really crazy how it dropped out of the sky because the funny thing is let me take these fractals off they're really distracting really not giving me the right look here to my charts okay so this is really weird in particular but here's what happened so we all had a Thanks. Thanks, Will. Appreciate you. Thanks, you, Justin. Thank you, Tiff. All right. So uh, we had a crash, a big crash from 113, 114. I'm pretty sure we all talked about this in the trade house. If you guys are following the trade house, if you guys are following the stream, uh, we had been talking about for some time moving back up from the 104 area up to uh, 113. We weren't going to be entirely sure how long it was going to take to get up there, but eventually we reached back up here to 114, 113.62 area. I'm really happy that we did because this entire box is the channel that we were playing in. What really intrigued me was the fact that we had dropped hard after a, a I don't know, a couple of months of consolidation sitting up here at 114 to 113. Uh, you know, we all talked about, okay, what kind of candlestick patterns do we need to be looking out for in order to sell off, in order to buy, what kind of signs do we have? Uh, I had been watching, you know, I've been watching my uh, RSI very closely, watching the price action up here very closely, and we all entered about 113.57, and it dropped all the way down to 104, 105, like, January 3rd, that was literally like last week, which is crazy from the very beginning. It's, it's crazy how that happens, like the very beginning of the year that happened, okay? Uh, now, I want to pull this up because this is what's really, really fascinating, I think. Just to put a little perspective in it for you. I need to get my, I need to get this back, my pro account. All right, so I was looking at USD CHF. What really intrigued me was it didn't react the same way that USD JPY did. Why is that? Let's figure that out. Okay, so I was describing to the trade house earlier that we may, because at the very beginning in January, each January that we passed, we dropped on USD CHF right um let me go find where let me go find my january where are my january entries 
They're like way back here. Okay, it might be on the weekly that I had spotted this. Chess, that is correct. That's May, where is January? Okay, so here we are. For the past several years, we had some drops, okay? Let me see, let's go back in here. Get out of the way. January 15th, drop. And we're back to January 16th, another drop. Not quite as hard, but we dropped again, okay? We come back over here. Here's another December between January. Drop again. And we're going to go look for the next one. Where is the next one? Where is my other January? Okay, this is a little bit different. This time, out of the next couple of years, we actually rose. But there's a reoccurring pattern here. We're back to January. We're actually lower for January. And we've broken structure. We've broken a little bit of structure on the close. On the close of this candle right here. Now, that means that we had hit a liquidity level. We had a nice liquidity level right here. So what is it going to look like when we break it down? Okay. There's a nice support there, right? There's a doji, there's a gravestone doji. So if we met support, then we may buy, right? Possible, very possible. Because here's the correlation. When I look at Euro USD, when I look at something like Euro USD, we came into the sell at 114.77 on January 1st. This is where our entries were, Euro USD. This is whenever NFP came out. Uh, you know, some wild things had happened, and we ended up with this. Boom. So we have a 61.8 retracement. I'm feeling a sell on Euro USD. I'm feeling a sell to, eh, I want to say around 111 from this area way down here okay so why am i feeling that well because a we had just risen interest rates um and if you guys have been paying attention to oil i want you to show i want to show you guys this too we'll possibly take a look at some cryptos too later all right let's go all the way down here we are all right crazy thing is go to the four hour crazy thing is consolidation right we were all anticipating at least a buy well we were kind of wrong actually very wrong we actually bought i don't know about 50.88 was the uh was the price that we wanted to buy at now because it did all of this consolidation we were figuring whenever it pierced one two three four five times we may buy up that didn't necessarily happen. So what's the next step from here? What what exactly, where exactly are we gonna go from here? Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my Fibonacci on here really quick. My price action Fibonacci, handy dandy thing. So from the first initial impulse leg down to 42.94, we've hit 61.8 again. Now, what is that, what exactly does all this mean? We're gonna go over to the DJI really quick. Not the DJI. We're going to look at the uh, dollar index. Okay. Well, I want you to keep in, what I want you to keep in consideration here, this is weird. Watch this. So why did USDJPY spike down, flash crash, quote unquote, and then we had Euro USD flash crash, quote unquote, Euro USD. So the US dollar, you're telling me it was stronger than the euro? And then in what happened here? Why did this happen? Why did any of this happen? We have to figure out why did any of this happen? January 3rd, what happened? Well, what happened on the dollar index? Huh. Not a lot of 
not a lot, a whole lot of things happened here. Hmm. Only thing I see is this here on January 4th, we had a nice spike up. We came up and touched 97. That was the area that I've been interested in the whole time, 97. And we were anticipating price to go above, dollar index to go above $100. Why has it not, why has it not done that yet? Okay, so here's, here's the moral of the story. Here's the case that we're building here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say manipulation. I want to say, I want to say that there may have been something underlying on Forex Factory. Let's take a look at that. Actually, a lot of the Japanese uh, pairs went Euro, Euro JPY, NZD JPY, GBP JPY fell from 145 to 138. Actually, it closed a lot small. It, it closed a lot lower than that. Watch this. It went way over here to 130.76. I don't think I was anticipating it to like sell all the way down there. Now, granted, this uh, this outlook that I did on GBP JPY a long time ago when we were trying to buy it, we definitely caught some pips, but I think we went in the wrong direction because A, we weren't thinking about the GBP. We weren't thinking about the Great Britain pound sterling being weak, you know, okay? But what we should what we should think about is why did this happen in the Japanese yen? I want to really figure that out. Did the Japanese yen get strong or something? Let's figure that out. So that was what January fourth that all this happened. Okay. There's nothing here for the Japanese yen right now. Let's go a little further. See, there's nothing on here. On January fourth, there's nothing here. So. What's really weird, let's look at this too. This is really weird because I've been noticing a little bit of a, a tra okay, wait, that's not trading view. Hold on one sec. Okay. I've been noticing this weird trend that if I go and look at USD CAD or if I go and look at Euro USD or USD JPY as part of the, uh, as part, as part of like the NFP. Hang on one second. Okay, so USD CAD went in favor of CAD. What the like WTF, dude? GBP JPY Euro USD sank went favoring Euro USD. WTF? Does any of that make sense to you guys? That doesn't make sense, does it? Banks, bank auto and hedge accounts with banks. Uh, that aren't manual probably have a huge effect in it. Obviously, not a grand scale as a flash, but without reasonable reason of a doubt. I, yep, you're right. Absolutely, Mike. Absolutely. Yeah, it's this. This is this to me seems a little bit weird. Okay, because why would we go in favor of USD CAD if, say, we were, you know. Yeah, unemployment rate was about 3.9%, but non-farm non payroll change was ex astronomically different. Definitely astronomically different. I mean, look, unemployment rate went 0.2%. I don't think that's really going to affect much from the U.S. dollar. So what we have to take into consideration is, is there manipulation? Yes, there is. Banks manipulate price. So what I want everybody to understand here is that no matter what pair you're in, technicals are first. News follows technicals every single time. Why? I'll tell you why. Because almost, I can't say 100%, but I got to say at least 80% of the time when I mark up charts and I say, hey guys, we're going to sell. I think we're going to sell. Some people might disagree with me because the US dollar may go up or it may go up in value or something. It's it has nothing to do with news. It has everything to do with the candlestick patterns, the structure, what it's telling you. Look, I can tell you all day long 
Look at how I want you. Look, the RSI is probably like my best friend. I want you to see over here that it was completely overbought here. But what happened over here? No, nah, I'm not convinced. See? I mean, yeah, okay. We went above structure, didn't we? We totally did. We went above structure. Oh, man. That was a horrible circle. Here we go. Better. We totally went above structure, didn't we? Completely. Bing. Closed above it. We're anticipating a buy. Guess what this is called? That's a bull trap. That means that the banks are trying to trap your money into a buy. And, and, and just in case what they're going to do to get all their money back, bing, we're gone. We're out of here. That's what they do, man. So here's what I'm anticipating for technicals on Euro USD. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a sell. I'm continuing a sell. I have a position in at 1.1418 right here. And it's not necessarily at 1.1418. It's like a little bit lower, like somewhere around in this realm. Right in here. And here's why. Because of all that. This is the pivot point in the market right here. So when market open, I'm, in, I'm, I'm expecting maybe a little bit of a jump up to the 61.8. That's what I'm feeling right now as the, at the current moment. A little bit of a jump up to 114, uh, 1816 ish. Nothing to be afraid of, but the longer term, what I'm looking for is all the way down to at least 111, 1 1.1199. So we have a potential trade of, you know, that's, I, I don't even know how many pips that is. I got to get the counter out here. We have a potential trade of around 217 pips. Now, here, I want to show you this too. This is one of my favorite pairs and here's why. I'm pretty sure everybody has been following me ever since I've been talking about this one particular area. Okay. Right here. At 1.0763. Why do I feel like we're going to come down here? Well, let's take a look at structure. Okay. Has this gap ever been covered? Most of the time, I'm always feeling that, you know what, gaps have been pretty, you know, loyal to me. They have. They've been, they've been pretty useful for me. Now, look at this structure right here. How have we, it's like, how have we guesstimated? We can't guesstimate a buy here, um, obviously, because structure just looks absolutely phenomenal. You know, we've got the, we, 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 we've got a touch and pierce right up here we never really closed above there but what i want you to take a look at what's most important is the candlesticks okay the wicks these wicks are coming up to touch stop losses the candlesticks this candlestick right here in particular i want you to look at that this is a form of doji and that form of doji right there can tell me everything. The only issue is, is that when they, this is what happened. Market opens, gaps up. It didn't gap up here, but goes up, then goes back down. Stop hunt, right? So that's where you would want to re-enter. But how do we prevent ourselves from getting nipped in the butt from these orders? Well, let's take a look at this candlestick okay it's pretty much almost on point with the other one pretty much so if we look back and we think okay we're protected because i don't think we're going to come back up here again rule of thumb is is that we may touch an area that has been spiked up to like this specifically It's gonna spike up to this area at least once or twice, one or two more times. Can it go back up there again? Possibly, but I don't I doubt it because we've been in this area for at least one, two, three, four different days. It consolidated, and we have nice, we have a nice bullish candle on the on the on the daily. It shows me nice volume. Okay. 
and if I have a wick that this of this size, this just means that there's no buyers. There's no that, to me. There's no buyer pressure up there. There's a lot of selling pressure in this area at 1.1481. So what am I going to do to gauge this? I need to gauge volume. I have like the caps lock on there. Interesting. All right. So let's take a look at volume here. When I see higher volume like this, that means that we've reached a signature of either supply and demand. Okay. This whole area right here is a supply and demand area. Don't ignore that. Uh, actually, I'm going to change the color of this. Here we go. Cool. So this whole area right here is a supply and demand area. So what else does that mean? Well, we also have gaps in the market. Look for the gaps. What do I keep telling you guys? Three gaps equals reversal. When we're in a consolidation like this, now I'm going to change the color of it right here. Rawr. Make it sky blue. Sky blue, baby. Cool. And what's also interesting to me is this candlestick formation. Weird as it looks, that looks like an order block. Basically, what that means is where the banks had put their orders. Now, because we had broken below structure, that would signify that we, and this is weird how I did this, but we're pretty close to the bottom, like right there next to the bottom of these two candles right here. You see, you remember how, do you remember how I had put the, uh, uh, you remember how I had put the, uh, Fibonacci retracement on there. So when I put it up here, I'm going to put it at the top of the wicks and then right here at the bottom of the wick. And then I'll go ahead and scroll out to the four hour. Okay. There's take profit. It's right around this pivot point. See? Scroll out again to the daily. We're actually a little bit below it. But do you notice how it's a zone? It's not, it's not a it's not a particular area that we're gonna, you know, it's not like a particular line that we're trying to profit in. It's it's an area. Always look for areas, not just we're not we're not here to we're not here to like guess like right on the money like right on the line right on the price point but it's an area so this is what i'm thinking with euro usd longer term i'm seeing a sell i'm seeing a sell from i'm seeing a sell from anywhere in the 61.8 area of 14 I'm going to actually go ahead and type that up there for you guys. You guys still with me? Type a 111 in the comments if you guys feel satisfied. All right. We got to sell from 1.14235. To 1.1439. The biggest difference is that there's a potential to reverse from here, gap up. We could gap up here or up to here. Who knows? This purplish line right here, we're deep purple. <laughs> this this purple line right here actually kind of interests me. I think that there's a, there's potential to go up here. Uh, playing up in this area between the 70% and the 61.8. And you know what? Markets have a tendency to gap. And I also want you to pay attention to this. I'm going to take all of this crap off. Come on. Come on. Okay. Where's my trend line? Here we are. Make that red. There we go. Cool. 
Okay, so this is, uh, this is a candlestick pattern I want you to pay attention to. This is what's really going to propel ourselves to said areas below, okay? In the old, in the old candlestick uh, Bible, what this is called is three black crows. So if I, if I, if I, if I turn my, if I turn my, uh, if I turn my uh, chart to black and white, white's going to be ascension and my descendant candles are going to be black. Okay. So on the four hour, what would tell me to go ahead and sell it if because it's a bigger time frame um being that it's a bigger time frame i'm almost pretty much partial to a sell side because of the volume of the sellers i understand i like having my uh watermark in the back for some reason that's just how i am it's weird how I am, you know what I mean? But so with that being said, there being a nice sell-off and then having a retracement, I wouldn't see why not. Retracement to 1.1423, boom. All right, let's move on. So USDJPY, let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about it. So when we made this, when we made this rally back up to 114. Don't mean to be competitive and when we are repetitive. And whenever I said that we were selling off and we bought from, we, I wouldn't necessarily say we bought from here, but understanding that there was a buying opportunity in this area. What really, what's really going to happen, what I think really is going to happen from here is we could potentially see a continuation, but Here's where I'm going to be with the price action FIBO. Okay. I really, I really love my price action FIBO because it's a pretty accurate tool for me. Okay. So I'm judging that there's a possibility to bounce right after it came back from here to come up to 112.52. And I feel as if, because this is a big, this is a big channel. Understand, this is a really big channel, a side ranging channel, and I really love trading in, in ranges. I really do. Um, there's a possibility of reaching up here because of the structure, because of what kind of structure is right behind the 80%. So 112.52 is my more likely area. And hey, guess what? If, if it doesn't go there, no big deal. But here's what I'm going to look for even further. Come on, cope with me here. There we go, 98. Now, some people are going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's way too far down. That's way too far down, folks. Uh, I, could, I could see it happening. I could see it happening. KG Swipes, what are you doing? <laughs> Love you, bro. All right, anyways, uh, that's the homie. Um, anyways, like I was saying, a lot of people are probably going to get a little skeptical here and say, why in the world would we go all the way down here to 100 or even past like what to 98.70? Uh, devaluation of the dollar, the stock market's more than likely going to go back down. I also want to go ahead and give you a nice, a nice outlook on the uh, DJI really quick. I think this will be useful in case you guys haven't seen it lately. Uh, here's what I said. I said that we're going to come back up to 2342, 2350. This is at least a week ago, at least two weeks ago, maybe. And we're going to go ahead and bounce off of that area. And we're going to go ahead and continue down. And here's what I'm looking for. Pretty sure the whole trade house is on this one, too. I've been talking about this one. Ding. Pretty sure we're going to hit this area right here in the 18 19,000 range on the DJI. I mean, look at the structure. That's beautiful structure. Beautiful respect on it. And can we open can we open gold a little bit higher? Yes and no. 
am I going to tell you, am I going to sit here and tell you that I can guarantee you exact that I know exactly what's going to happen? No, because it's Forex. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's trading. No such thing as guarantees here, ladies and gentlemen. But what I can say is I'm sure that everybody has seen this before. Let me pull up some of the, uh, I wonder if I had it in my pictures, downloads. I don't know exactly where I have it yet. I'm going to pull it up for you. Guys. Oh, there it is. Perfect. I'm going to pull this up for you guys. The schematic. Bing. It's like my favorite word nowadays. Bing. All right. Can you see it? Can you see it? Wyckoff. Guys, behavioral science. Wyckoff events and phases. What phase are we in? I'm going to say we're in LPSY. Lower point of strength. So we're we're showing we're showing signs of weakness. This is where the sign of weakness is right here. Okay, look, oh, I can't annotate on that. But anyways, you're seeing what I'm saying. We're in phase D right now. There's a potential of going even lower than 19,000 and, and we could potentially go down here to 16,000. I mean, look at the support. Look, look at how, look at how, I mean, look at how perfect that support looks, guys. Now, I could be wrong, but I mean, most of the time when we are looking at things like this, most of the time it happens. I'm not saying that I'm 100% accurate. I'm not saying that the trade house is 100% accurate. I'm just simply saying that from, you know, experience, from our Wyckoff schematics, you know, from the candlestick patterns, from, you know, the structure, a lot of things, too many things align. And that's just the way that I feel. And I think the market may be open. Is it open now? Yes, it is. So let's see what let's see what our open looked like. We definitely didn't do anything here. We stayed at 108, didn't we? What did we do here? Oh, we actually gapped down instead a little bit. Okay. I respect that. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to break 114.03 or not. We'll see what happens when we go later in depth to the uh, into the uh, into the night. So here's what here's what I want you to do. Um, there's a little bit of homework I want you guys to do for me, really quick. So I want you to research some market execution orders. I want you to I want you to demo I want you to demo this really quick though. Go to the why did I go to the four hour? I was trying to go to the 30 minute, no 15 minute. That's where I wanted to go. I want you guys to go to at least midnight, at least midnight to three o'clock and observe what happens and how fast price moves on Euro USD. Okay. I also want you guys to go to at least seven o'clock, at least wake up around 6:30 or something, if you want to back test it or not. Um, this is what I've been finding more often happening than not pretty much almost a guaranteed pip, uh, 50 pips. Now, obviously we can't say guarantees, but I've been seeing this happen a lot more often than not. Okay. Here's the one to two, here's the one to three o'clock, uh, entry right here. Nice sell off right there. Beautiful. Nice liquidity. Okay. Let's see. Where can I find my example? Okay. So 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if this one's completely 50 pips, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's about 60 pips. So what I've been, uh, what I've been really discovering, guys, I'm just going to share this. Uh, I'm just going to share this strategy with you. Uh, this strategy is a 50 pip and dip strategy. Uh, it's designed for minimal drawdown possible. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I say that, oh yeah, you, you're right. Three black crows. I said three white soldiers earlier, I think. <laughs> But um, anyways, so 
where we where what, what I'm looking for what I'm looking for here is minimal drawdown. I'm looking for a compound interest strategy because a lot of times what I'm finding, what I'm hearing, a lot of people are like, well, you know, we're not getting anywhere. We feel a little bit stuck. Blah 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 blah. What I found is more often than not that people just don't have a compound interest strategy. So I wanted to just get in here really quick on this market outlook while we while we're here. Teach you a little bit of strategy within 15 minutes. Super simple. I'm gonna go ahead and write out all of the requirements. Okay. So immediately we're gonna go to 6:30. Oops, that's not right. 6:30 to 11 o'clock a.m. every morning. Usually the entry is going to be around 70, 7 to 9 o'clock. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Entry usual 7, oh gosh, 7 to 9. Okay, cool. So next, what, why I have the fractals up? I actually wanted to tell you guys this. Um, so the fractals are designed so we're going to put fractals on here. there's no setting for them fractals are the stops we want 10 to 20 pip stop losses okay now what are the requirements i'm going to show you the requirements for the strategy are oversold on the RSI. My settings are currently at 14. Stop it. So oversold on the RSI. I really like doing that. But what I like more, this is uh oh uh oh. I can't add that indicator. Let me delete the uh, volume top of here. This is my favorite ever. I'm pretty sure I can add this. I don't have three indicators on here. Goofball. Oh, fractals. Duh. Let me take the EMA off. Cool. Goof nut. Okay. Sweet. All right. So I have a default percentage length at 80. That's not usually the default. The default's like, I think, five, maybe six. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that this is a this is an indicator. This is a strategy that I had learned a long time ago between the RSI and the and the and the Williams percentage indicator. Just using these two right here, I was never really um, I was never really using it in accordance to the strategy. But what I found was that I like to use the the Williams to show me what's called hang time. Okay, what I want you to see is how long does it hang below eighty. How long does it how long does it hang above, you know, uh, how long does it hang above zero or one, right? What that simply means is consolidation. I want to know how long it's going to consolidate in an area. Because if you notice from uh, you know, seven o'clock all the way up, it took forever for everything to happen, right? And it sat here and it hung, it was just hanging for, I don't know, several hours, actually. And it also can help you with momentum. It can also help you by spotting momentum. Like if you see something like this, this is a perfect setup. Something like this, this is beautiful. I love seeing stuff like this. See, you want to see divergence mixed with hang time. If you don't have hang time or divergence in this, forget it. Don't get in the trade. Okay? Hang time, divergence, perfect, get in the trade. Easy. Hidden divergence, perfect, get in the trade. There's two trades that were 50 pips each right there with minimal drawdown. Guess what time this one was? Eight o'clock in the morning. Guess what time this one was? Around 12 o'clock. If you executed, if you executed right here at nine o'clock, you took 50 pips or 60 with minimal drawdown. Okay? And your stop loss is up here. 34, right below. 52, pretty close, pretty close to 20 pips. All right. Now let's go look for some more. Let's go look for some more. Uh, let's go look for some more ideas. 
That's one o'clock in the morning, does not qualify. Um, does not qualify, does not qualify. 2.30 in the morning, this one, this one right here, this could qualify right here. Um, it has, it doesn't necessarily have any type of divergence on it. It's just over bot. Um, it's just over bot, that's it. Uh, we've had some hang time up here. This is what's beautiful about this strategy, guys. The hang time right here, sitting here forever and ever and ever. I want you to also remember, guys, we do have to include structure in here. There's no, there's, there's no reason. There's like, I don't even know how to explain it, how important structure is in every strategy, in every strategy, in every strategy, guys. So look at the structure first. Where are we at? If we come here and we're looking over sold or over bought, that looks, you know, pretty decent. We, you know, had a nice candlestick pattern. Oh, did I forget to mention we need candlestick patterns for the strategy too? When it was overbought, we had a gravestone doji, a very beautiful gravestone doji. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you see that? Do you see that? Oh my goodness. That is sexy. So I would have entered immediately after that happened. Blam, 50 pips. How much drawdown? Uh, barely any, eight pips. What, I'm, what, what I want for advanced traders, if you, I mean like if you feel comfortable with it, you can limit your stop losses to 10 pips. But I want you to also understand too guys, this is the power of this strategy. Take this strategy and freaking run with it, dude. Seriously. Um, here's here. I got to continue with my, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here, I'm going to show you some more setups first, and then we'll go back to the parameters. Okay. 10 in the morning. Still within the parameters, right? What did I say? Let's go back here really quick. I want to go find those notes that I had on the uh, on the chart. Come on, move with me here. I said 6.30 to 11 o'clock, right? When I said 6.30 to 11 o'clock, that one was at 10.45. That was an exception. We can still go back and take that trade. See, this is the reason why I haven't been talking to you guys in forever. <laughs> all right, let's go all the way back. Got about nine minutes, or I can sit on here for hours and explain this thing. All right. Come on. Let's go. Hey, chart, would you load, please? Thank you. Cool. So obviously we had some hang time. We didn't have a lot of hang time. We were we had a nice, strong momentum down. I mean, it kind of made sense to go ahead and buy it. I mean, look, we had a doji in the middle. Nice doji here, right around 1030. This is probably the point that I would have bought it, right here, right in this area. I know it went a little bit lower, but how much lower did it go? It qualifies. I mean, it does. It does. It would have. It would have. We would have had to execute that trade shortly after that doji had happened. So it was going to be in this candlestick. I'm going to go to the very top just to give it the benefit of the doubt, um, and then go. Yeah, it would have been a drawdown about six pips, but the return would have been ridiculous. How much further did it go up? See, and then you could have you could have taken you could have taken another trade right up here at three in the morning. See what I'm saying? So you could easily accrue like 100 pips a day. Easy, 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 easy. Okay, 5:30 in the morning, six o'clock. What happened? Here's the divergence. Yeah, sometimes it's going to happen at five o'clock in the morning. We're probably going to miss it sometimes. Is it within our parameters at six o'clock, 6:30? No. Do I ask you to do your due diligence and 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 you know search out different times and see what works best for you? Absolutely. But look at the structure behind this. Look at the structure behind it. Look at the structure behind it. I'm going to say it three times. This is ridiculous. Structure, structure, structure. And if I went any further with this and I decided to go ahead and just put a Fibonacci on it, like from this impulse all the way down to here, 
what are, what would it have looked like? Couldn't have gotten any better than that, folks. Seriously. After it bounced, because this is when it would have bounced, right here at the bottom. Here's the hang time. Here's the consolidation. How long was that consolidation? It was in the Asian session. We're not going to trade in the Asian session, obviously, on your OUSD. But what we will do is do our due diligence and make sure. Hey, look, so for the Fibonacci, the price action Fibonacci, I want you guys to write this down. What you have to, what you have to have in order to make this happen is you have to have an impulse leg. You have, it's going to be right after the last bullish candle of the impulse leg down, okay, in structure. So as soon as it establishes a support, how are we going to know it's establishing a support, okay? It slows down in the Asian, the Asian session, and it's above this flip resistance. This is support. This is this is resistance flip support. It became support, right? So that's where we would have come back up to our Fibonacci retracement at 70% and boom. Sell it. Big time. Okay. Gorgeous. Okay, so you guys have seen enough. I'm gonna go over the uh, I'm gonna go over the the parameters of the strategy for you guys. Okay. You guys can go back and back test this all you want. Do your due diligence. Make sure it's the right fit for you. Okay. I really didn't want to release this, but I did it anyways. So we're going to go with 50 pips and take profit. If you want, you can move, you can actually get a trailing stop loss or you can trail your stop loss manually. I'm going to put that up here. Trailing, trailing auto or manual misspelled manual well that might have been misspelling manual there okay cool i don't know if i there we go okay so 50 pips and take profit what are the what are the parameters of rsi 14 must be above the what is it, the 70 or the 80 that's 70 that's 70 yeah must be above 70 and have divergence to sell exception to being either oversold and overbought vice versa guys Obviously, on the 30, it has to be oversold or overbought. No, yeah, oversold, my bad. Oversold. So, uh, must have divergence. I personally like to have divergence looking at price on the 50. This is on the 15 minute chart, guys, by the way. This isn't on the, this is not on the four hour. This is not on the, you know, the, the one day. It's not on the weekly. We're looking for just price action. And timing okay so continuing with the parameters you guys you guys had something special happen here guys people who stayed on here okay so Williams percentage indicator will be at the default of 80 percent length 80 length is what its technical term is must have oversold and overbought conditions to be met along with at least one to two hours of hang time. Boom. Candlestick patterns, let's go over those. Candlestick requirements. Let's go with hammer. 
also inverted, oops, as long and uh, as well as pin bars. Dojis, I honestly, here, I'm going to be specific with this one. We have to have gravestone dojis and what are they called? Firefly dojis? I think that's, what, is that what they're called? Firefly dojis? I can't remember. I don't know why I don't remember that. I'm going to call it a firefly doji and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> firefly doji. That might not be the right technical term for it, but who cares? All right. So we have two specific three, well, technically four specific ones. These are the ones that I require for my trading. You guys, there are so many other reversal patterns that you can be using for this. Um, but these are, this is what is required. Also, structure must be met. If you guys want the fib, oh, dragonfly, that's right. It's a dragonfly doji. Oh my goodness. Ozark, really? <laughs> All right. So we got also structure must be met. Now, what else do we have to have? That's about it, guys. That's really it. So take a screenshot of that if you want. Write it down. Uh-oh. There we go. You guys get that? Copy that down for me. Mm -mm -mm. Everybody got it? Cool. If you guys don't have it, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. We'll be good. We be good. All right. Cool. So that's it for today, folks. I, I didn't really anticipate teaching you guys that, but I kind of wanted to because it makes me feel good. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my, um, go ahead and put my video back on. Stop sharing really quick. I never really had the video on to begin with, but so guys, what I want you to do, like I said, your homework tonight, go and research those uh, candlestick patterns. Okay. Go and back test this strategy and see for yourself how it works. Okay. With that being said, guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for participating on tonight's Sunday market outlook as the market opens. Let's go catch those pips. Catch them all. Love you guys. Peace out.